how to retrieve an actor from its QID in the level sequence with C++ in Unreal. Because that's something I didn't cover in the previous videos and when I wanted to retrieve my actors, I didn't know how to. So let's get to it. As usual, a new header file and today we're gonna have two functions. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and we have the first function, the get all UIDs from level sequence. That one is simply going to retrieve all the UIDs of all the objects that are in the level sequence. And then from those UIDs, I'm just going to pick one and call the function that we're interested in the get actor from UID in level sequence because we need a UID to call that one and I don't have a way to retrieve all the UIDs right now. So we're going to create a first function to retrieve all the UIDs and then pick from there. So get all UIDs from level sequence. We're going to have to provide it the path of the level sequence. It's going to look through everything that is inside the level sequence and return us an array of UID. And that's it. That one's going to be simple. The next one is the get actor from UID in level sequence. So we have a UID. The origin of the UID can be anything it doesn't really matter. In our case, it's going to be this function, but you can retrieve it from any way you want. So you're going to have a UID, you're going to have the path of the level sequence you want to look into, and that function is going to look inside that level sequence and return you the actor corresponding to that UID, if it finds it, obviously. If it's not there, it's not going to return you anything. Here we go. So that's it for the header file. Now let's jump in the CPP, and we have our two functions right here, and we're also going to need three includes right here at the top. The first include is going to be the editor engine. I'm just going to use that one to retrieve the world that is currently open in the editor. If you have another way to retrieve the world in your project, or if in your current context you already have access to the world, you don't need that one. That one is really just to retrieve the world currently open in the editor because I don't have any other way to retrieve the world in my current context. But for the other two includes, these ones, you need them. You need the level sequence and the movie scene to retrieve all the UIDs that are in there. Good. These three includes are in three modules, so Unreal ID, level sequence, and movie scene. So we're going to make sure that these three modules are inside the build.cs file. So I'm going to go in there. I have my level sequence already highlighted in there. I have my movie scene and I have my Unreal ED. Here we go. Everything's set up properly. If you're missing some, please make sure to add them. Otherwise, it's not going to compile. Perfect. Let's go back in the CPP. So let's start with the first function, the get all UIDs from level sequence. For that one, it's going to be relatively simple. You first start with the level sequence pad that you're going to use to load a level sequence, obviously. So here I'm going to do a static load object using the level sequence pad to load a level sequence. And that's going to output a level sequence in my little variable right here. Then I'm going to make sure that this variable is valid, otherwise I'm not going to be able to retrieve anything from it. So if the level sequence is equal to null, I'm just going to return right away. And I'm also going to make sure that the movie scene inside the level sequence is also valid because we're going to need it. So let's just make sure that it's valid right here. So if the level sequence is valid and the movie scene is valid, we can continue. Otherwise, we're just going to return right here. Perfect. So we have a valid level sequence. We have a valid movie scene. Now it's just time to retrieve all the UIDs from there. And to do that, we're going to need to first create ourselves a little variable to contain all the UIDs that are inside the level sequence, because in the level sequence, they are not stored as UIDs. They are stored as object bindings, and we have to convert them to UIDs. And that's what we're going to do first. And then we're going to feed all the UIDs inside this little variable right here. So we have the variable that's going to receive all the UIDs. Then we can loop through all the bindings inside the level sequence. So in the level sequence, I'm going to access the movie scene. In there, I'm going to get all the bindings, get bindings. And that's going to loop through all the bindings that are inside the level sequence. With those binding, I'm just going to retrieve their UID. So binding that get object UID, that's going to give me the UID that I can then add inside my little array right here. Array that I can finally return at the end of the function. It was relatively simple, actually. Not much to complain about here. Good. So it was a success. We returned the UID and we're done. Let's take a look at the second function. That one is going to be a little bit more tricky. Not much though, just a little bit. From that one, same thing. You start with a level sequence path. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to do a static load object to load my level sequence from the path. And that's going to give me a level sequence. I'm also going to make sure that it is valid. This time I don't need the movie scene. So I'm just going to make sure that the level sequence is valid and that's going to be good enough. And then this is where we're also going to need the world because the level sequence contain bindings, the world contains an actor and we have to match them together. We have to match the bindings and the level sequence with the actors that are inside the world. So Unreal needs to know which world we're using to match our bindings in the level sequence. So that's what we're going to do right here. I'm just going to retrieve the world that is currently open in the editor. So if the G editor is valid, I'm just going to get the world context and get the world inside that world context. Otherwise, I'm just going to set it to null because there's no world open in the editor and that's not going to work in our case. But I'm pretty sure we're going to have a world open in the editor because I know what I'm doing and I'm going to have my world right here. In case, I'm just going to add a little check right there. If the world is not valid, I'm not going to be able to retrieve any actor. So I can just return right away right here. 
But I know that in my case, we're gonna have a valid world so we can continue with the logic. So we have a valid sequence, we have a valid world, now let's just match them together. And to do that, we also need to create ourselves a little variable first, and here it is. And it's a pretty weird one. It's an array of object pointer, comma, t inline allocator, one. Okay, that's a bit weird. Whatever, just go with it, that's how it works. That's the type of the variable Unreal is going to give back to you when we ask it for all the actors corresponding to a GUID. And I say all the actors, yeah, I don't know why, but I think it's possible to have multiple objects matching the same UID in the level sequence. In my case, I'm just gonna have one, so it's not gonna be an issue, but yeah, I really don't know in which context that will be the case. I don't know why multiple objects in the level sequence will have the same UID. But whatever, let's ignore that for now. We have a UID, we're gonna find all the objects corresponding to that UID, and that should give us only one object. Okay, we have the UID, we have our list that is going to receive all the objects, and now we just have to populate that list. So in the level sequence, we can call the function locate about objects, feeding it the UID that we're looking for, the world in which we're looking for, so that's the world that we have right here, and it's going to output all the objects inside our little variable that we just created. Good. We we now have a list of objects inside the level sequence that match that UID. Perfect. Now we just have to check if the list is empty or not. If it's not empty, so if there's more than zero object, it means that, well, we found at least one object that match that UID. And we can say that, well, it was a success. We found an object matching that UID and we can return it to the user. Since I'm expecting to receive an actor right here, I'm just going to cast it to an actor. So I'm taking the first object from the list. So out objects element zero, I'm going to cast it to an actor and return it to my user. If that object was not an actor, because it's possible that the was anything else. It could be a component, it could be a folder, it could be anything. So here I'm just gonna cast it to an actor. If the cast fail, well, I'm just going to return null pointer, but if it works, well, the user is gonna have an actor and that's what he wants, perfect. And the last thing we have to do before jumping in Unreal, in the case that the list was empty, so we didn't find any object, it means that the UID that we receive as input doesn't match with anything. In that case, I'm just gonna say that it was a fail, we didn't find a valid object matching that UID, and I'm just going to return null pointer to my user and now it's time to jump in Unreal to test all that. And here I am in Unreal in a relatively empty scene as usual, and I also have a level sequence. In my scene, I have two warriors, so here they are, and they are also in the level sequence, because if we want to be able to find those warriors inside the level sequence, they have to be in there, obviously. So I have two bindings. I have that one right here, warrior one and warrior two. They are in the level sequence. They don't have anything except a transform track that we're gonna use a little bit later in the video. And there's nothing fancy in there. It's just two warriors, drag and drop inside the level sequence and what we're going to do is retrieve those warriors, the actors in the scene from the binding in the level sequence using a user interface as usual. So I have my user interface right here, the path of my level sequence, I can write it in there and then I have one button, it's going to be good enough for our needs today, we're just going to click on that button and it's going to do something with the bindings in the level sequence and that's going to happen in the graph right there. So I click on my button, what am I doing? And well, I'm first getting all the UIDs from the level sequence, so here that's the first function we create. And I'm providing it the path of the level sequence I want to look into, obviously. So that's the one written in my user interface. I have that path. I'm asking to retrieve all the UIDs. And if it worked, then I'm going to call my second function, the get actor from UID in level sequence. And in that one, I'm going to provide the same level sequence path, obviously, because it worked for the first function. We also want to use the same one for the second function, otherwise, it's not going to work. And then for the UIDs, I'm going to pick a random one that I received from the first function. So in my case, I have two warriors in my level sequence, so warrior one and warrior two, and I'm going to pick a random one between those two, and I'm going to feed it to my second function. It's going to be random, it's never going to be the same, maybe it's going to be the same or not, and it's going to feed it inside my second function, and that function is going to return us the actor matching that random UID, and that random actor right here, I'm just going to move it to zero, zero, zero. That's where we're going to see if it worked or not. If an actor moves, it means that I was able to retrieve a random actor from my UIDs inside the level sequence. Okay, that was a lot. So just a quick recap. When I click on my button, I'm getting all the UIDs inside the level sequence. From those UIDs, I'm picking a random one, whatever it is, doesn't matter. I'm getting the actor corresponding to that UID, and then I'm moving it to 0000. 
0.0000 just so we can see a result perfect let's go see how it looks i'm gonna go in unreal i'm gonna run my widget and here it is i'm writing the path of my level sequence which is already there that's the one right here and then i'm going to click on get actor it's going to pick a random one so it picked the one on the right i'm just going to deselect it to make sure that it's not affecting the result so it picked the random one on the right and it moved it to the center now if i scrub back in my sequencer it places it back to where it was before because I have my transform track. That's why it's useful right here. It randomly picked the right one on the first ejection. So I'm going to click on get actor once again. It picked the right one once again. Get actor. Ah, it picked the left one. Okay, that's good. Get actor again. Left one. Get actor. Left again. Get actor. Ah, the right one. Here we go. So we can see that I'm able to retrieve either the left or the right warrior depending which one gets randomly generated. So it's not stable, but in your case, obviously, you can add more logic to make sure to retrieve the proper actor not a random one like I'm doing right now. So anyway, that's going to be it for today's video and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.